Welcome back to Arise and Shine. David Diamante is a professional boxing announcer as well as the voice of the Brooklyn Nets. He's also the owner of Diamante's Brooklyn Cigar Lounge. He's here with us today to discuss his career and the cigar business. Welcome, David. Thank you, Priya. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, great to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Shahan. So, nice to be here. Tell us a little bit about how you got into sports announcing. Well, I was always a fan of boxing, and uh, I always loved the pageantry of the announcers. And I did some fighting myself, and I realized I'm a better announcer than fighter. So it really started uh, with that. Right. And uh, I started announcing boxing over 10 years ago, and it's just really, really grown into a, a lot larger stuff. Now, you're also the voice of the Brooklyn Nets, which is really exciting. Of course, <laughs> big in New York. How did you get into that? Well, that started, you know, sports announcing from boxing. And the Brooklyn Nets, you know, Brooklyn hasn't had a sports team uh, since mm -hmm. 1955. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a long time, I think 57 actually. So uh, it's been over 50 years. So as soon as the Nets were gonna come to Brooklyn, it was something very exciting. I'm a fifth generation Brooklynite and uh, it, it was an exciting thing. So they had an audition, over 400 people came out. Wow. And I was the last wow. man standing. Amazing, and there's been some really cool celebrities that have come out to some of the Nets games. I think most recently, what, Jay-Z and Beyonce were there, right? Well, they're there quite a bit. But right. Most recently, we had uh, the Prince. Yeah, exactly. The Prince. And, uh, Did you get to meet them or dying to know? So I got, I got to introduce them. Okay, so, that's pretty cool. How did you do that? Can you do that quickly? I, I want to hear. Did you, did you do it with a yeah, royal accent? Yeah, we have to accent? hear your announcer voice now. <laughs> I think a little bit later we'll do okay. that. We'll do it. Okay, fine. They, we'll but they came in mid-game. They yeah. came okay. in mid-game um, during the third quarter. Oh, and uh, So I was already announcing uh, the game, so I didn't actually get to meet them, but I did get to announce them, and it was great. That's how do really you prepare cool. for that? Or is it mainly off the cuff if you need to say things during the game? Is it all scripted? No, it's, <clears throat> it's not all scripted. Um, you know, some things are scripted, but a lot of the stuff, it's, it's really you're calling the, the live action. Right. Yeah. So you have to know the sport. Um, I always show up a couple hours early, go to the press room, you look over notes, you check out the different teams and what's happening. And, you know, I've been doing it now, I'm in my fourth season with the team. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, it's, it's my job, it's what I do. I feel very, very comfortable behind the microphone. Yeah. Uh, it's something I really love to do. So as soon as I sit down, I'm, I'm ready to go. You're in the zone. Yeah. I'm in the zone, and especially, you know, being in Brooklyn, it's just a wonderful thing because Barclays Center, it's a billion dollar arena. Yeah. It's, it's one of the most cutting edge, amazing arenas in the world. Mm -hmm. And we have some of the largest acts and the sight lines and Broadway lighting and the crowd, like you're talking about, you know, yeah. Jay-Z and Paul McCartney, Bill, Bill Clinton. Clinton. Yeah. I mean, many, many people have come. There David they are, Beckham. right there. So many people oh, are. Oh, look at you. Oh, got to meet you him. meeting everyone. You got <laughs> to meet Bill Clinton. <laughs> I've met quite a few people yeah. there. You know, Denzel Washington, uh, obviously Spike comes. And wow. A lot of different people come. He, he comes for the for the Knicks, but yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun and it's it's a great vibe because uh, Brooklyn, it's it's really a big. The energy is it's really It's a big amazing. community and yeah. the energy is unparalleled. It's unbelievable. Amazing. Best fans, best fans <laughs> in the world. Now, you also travel a lot in your downtime. Tell us about that. Well, I, I am a, a world traveler. Uh, I, I love to travel. I have been around the world several times and uh, I'm kind of an, an adventure traveler. So most recently I was, I was just in Haiti. Uh, I was just in Ethiopia, wow. Egypt and Somalia. Um, you know, most of the time I rent a motorcycle yeah. and I travel around. Um, I actually just got back from uh, Spain where I ran with the bulls. Oh my gosh, oh, wow. um, how was that? <laughs> it, was, <laughs> whole, it, was, you're running. it was really amazing. Um, I did it with a cigar in my mouth. <laughs> that's, that's my signature style. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm always just trying to learn and something meet new. people and learn about culture. It's, it's something I find very important. Yeah. Um, and it, it really enriches my life and my spirituality. That's something I can relate to as well. But let's talk cigars now, because aside from your sports announcing and your traveling, you've also started this cigar lounge in Brooklyn. Um, what inspired you to do that? Well, it's a great question. So really, in my, I've always loved cigars. Mm -hmm. And in my travels, uh, I learned a lot about cigars and I, I visited a lot of places where cigars are produced and I started visiting farms and factories and learning a lot about it. And in doing that, I created my own blend of cigar. So uh, I work with a factory down in Dominican Republic and I have my own brand of cigar. Mm -hmm. Having said that, in New York, I used to always have to go to Manhattan to, to smoke cigars. There was no cigar lounge in Brooklyn and I couldn't believe that we didn't have it. So. Right, yeah. I put one, and Diamante's Brooklyn Cigar Lounge is the very first cigar lounge in Brooklyn. We've been there over five years now, and 
I just can't tell you how amazing it is. It's it's a yeah. wonderful feeling to create something like that and create, you know, I was talking about commu the community feel of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. but it really, it brings that through. And as a fifth generation Brooklynite, I'm, I'm two blocks from the Barclay Center, yeah. so I smoke cigars, different guys come through, right. sometimes players, I mean, all kinds of guys come through, and it's a wonderful thing. So that's why I started it. We didn't have a cigar lounge in Brooklyn, right. and we so, needed one. Yeah. So. so let's talk about one of the latest, uh, the biggest news stories of this past week. President Obama obviously is deciding that he wants to open economic and diplomatic ties with Cuba. Um, how do you think that's going to affect the cigar business in the United States? It's a great question. Um, first and foremost, I want to say, forget about cigars, I'm more worried about the people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the people, what they're going through in Cuba, um, I wish the best for the people and I hope that, that things loosen up for the, the, the residents of Cuba and their citizens. Um, but talking now to cigars, uh, First of all, it's important to know that the embargo is not completely lifted yet. Right. Um, we are not allowed to sell Cuban cigars here in the United States. And at my lounge, we always follow always the letter of the law. Right. So that's not happening yet. Um, in the future, if that does happen, it's going to be, I think, very good for the cigar industry. Mm -hmm. I think there'll be a resurgence uh, of people, obviously, the forbidden fruit of Cuban cigars. Yeah. But having said that, it's really important to know that when the revolution happened, you know, in 61, a lot of the, a lot of the Cuban families that were the largest and most talented cigar producers, mm -hmm. they actually took their seeds and they left Cuba. Mm -hmm. And they went to different countries like Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. Nicaragua, and Honduras, where the, the, the climate and the soil is very similar to Cuba. And they have continued their businesses for many years. Mm -hmm. So the, cigar, the cigars that are produced now that we have here in the United States and around the world, non-Cuban are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They're Cuban seed, right. but they're not Cuban leaf, yeah. but they're mm -hmm. Cuban seed and they're, they're really great. And another thing to note about that is that Cuban cigars are what's called, they're called puros, which mm -hmm. in Spanish they're pure. Okay. So they're pure Cuban tobacco. Uh, when you get cigars from other countries, mm -hmm. they can blend from, you know, cigars, right. great cigar tobacco comes from Cameroon, Indonesia, wow. Brazil, Ecuador, yeah. Mexico, Connecticut. So it comes from all over the world. <laughs> Connecticut uh, has some of the best wrapper. Wow. It's, it's a, a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper is, is one of the tastiest and, and most sought after wrappers in the world for cigars right up the road here in Connecticut. Yeah. But Putting all of that aside, Connecticut and all of that, <laughs> are Cuban cigars the best of the best? Great question. You know, that's, first of all, it's hard to say what's the best. Mm -hmm. uh, it really depends on, the, to me, the best cigar is the one that you enjoy the most uh, to smoke. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's important to note that just because a cigar is Cuban doesn't mean it's good, and just because a cigar is not Cuban doesn't mean it's bad. Right. You know, Cuban tobacco does have, you know, a very specific taste to it. Um, I think that you have to blend a cigar. It's much like wine, mm -hmm. uh, where you take, uh, if, you're, if you're creating, let's say, a, a, a sauce or a stew, you take something that's spicy, something that's sweet, and you take different leaves. And that's what can happen right now with right. cigars that are being made out of the country. Mm -hmm. um, because in Dominican Republic and in Honduras and Nicaragua, they're getting all these wrappers from around the world and they're creating these wonderful blends. So there are some amazing Cuban cigars, don't get me wrong, but right. not all of them are great. And there are some phenomenal non-Cuban cigars. Right. With all of that inside, I have mm -hmm. to ask you, what do you think about the future of cigars? Well, what I'm really excited for, if the embargo does finally uh, get lifted, right. What I would like to see are these incredible blends of the future. So you taking certain wraps from different countries and maybe a filler and a binder from a different country and, and you're throwing in some different Cuban leaves. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be wonderful. And I, like I said, I think a lot of people are going to want to taste those Cuban cigars. So yeah. Yeah. I look for big things and I think there's going to be a big resurgence. I think Shahan and I might have to take a little field trip to Brooklyn and check out your <laughs> yeah. lounge. It sounds great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us here today, David. This has been a very interesting conversation. We can uh, wish you continued success in all of your endeavors. To find out more about David and his cigar lounge, go to daviddiamante.com or brooklyncigarlounge.com or you can find him on Twitter at David Diamante and at Brooklyn Cigar. David David, you know what? I think uh, Shahan and I, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Yep. We're ready that to hear voice. your announcer voice. So can you tell us? <laughs> you can just take a look at this camera and tell us what's coming up next on our show. Happy to do it, Priya. <laughs>
Coming up, we'll meet the dynamic duo behind the vegan-friendly and toxin-free nail lacquers, Ginger and Liz Color Collections. Stay tuned for more A Rise and Shine. Amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You make everything sound good. Yeah. <laughs>